Hey, this is the biology classroom and we are recording. This is a video about dilution methods and how to make a table in paper tree. There are two types of dilution methods that you will use in the exam. The first one is simple dilution and the second one is serial dilution. The difference is that for simple dilution, you always use the stock solution to prepare all the other concentrations. While for serial dilution, you use the stock solution to prepare the first one, the first to prepare the second, and so on. When you want to use simple dilution, you have to know the formula M1V1 equals to M2V2, where M is the concentration and V is the volume. So let's have an example. Let's say your stock solution is 4% sucrose and you want to use it to prepare 10 cm cube of 1% sucrose. First of all, write down the formula M1V1 equals to M2V2. Next, fill in all the value M1 equals to 4%, V1 is the one that I want to calculate, M2 is 1%, and V2 is 10 cm cube. So this will make your V1 equals to 2.5 cm cube. This calculation shows that you need 2.5 cm cube of 4% sucrose in order to have 10 cm cube of 1% sucrose. What you have to do next is get 2.5 cm cube of 4% sucrose, add distilled water. When you get 10 cm cube, this is 1% sucrose. Serial dilution is used when you want to half the concentration of a solution or you want to make it 10 times more diluted. Let's say you want to dilute a 4% sucrose into 2% sucrose and then to 1% sucrose. All you need to do is take a certain amount of 4% sucrose solution, add equal amount of distilled water, and this will give you 2% sucrose solution. Do the same by using the 2% sucrose solution and you will half it into 1%. If you want to make a solution 10 times more diluted, you have to mix the solution with distilled water in the 1 to 9 ratio. For example, you want to dilute a 4% glucose to 0.4%. Mix 1 cm cube of 4% glucose with 9 cm cube of distilled water, and you have 10 cm cube of 0.4% glucose. First of all, you must use lines to separate all the columns and to separate the headings from the contents. So, the safest thing to do is to always box everything up. Make sure all the lines are connected and there are no broken lines. Secondly, you have to always follow the instructions given in the question. For example, if the question wants you to start the experiment by using the highest concentration of sucrose, you have to make sure that the highest concentration is written as the first row. If the question wants you to repeat the experiment, make sure the results for all replicates are recorded. Sometimes, you might need to calculate the mean as well. Some questions might want you to process the data before you record them. In this case, do not record the raw data. Independent variables can be the first column or the first row. Make sure you write down the whole sentence from the question. For example, if the question wants you to record number of bubbles released in one minute, do not only write number of bubbles. Make sure all the units are only in the headings. Do not write any units in the body of the table. Record quantitative data to the same number of significant figures dependent on the measuring instrument used. For example, if you are using meter ruler to measure something, the smallest unit is 1 millimeter. So if you are recording your data in centimeters, there should be only one decimal place, and if you are recording in millimeters, there should be a whole number. Lastly, don't worry too much about the accuracy of your data. As long as the trend of your data is logical, you should be able to get full marks. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me by commenting on the video.